This is one of my top 10 all-time favorite comic books here, Predator vs. Wolverine. I have a huge collection of comic books in general. This is definitely among, among the top. Uh, all the artwork of the Predator is always just something to behold. So we start very quickly, present-day Canada, where we have a absolutely destroyed Logan, nearly missing his arm. It was blown off. His scalp is showing. And in the monologue here, he acknowledges that this is one of the first times in his entire career as the Wolverine that he finds himself not being the hunter, but the hunt did. As he's trying to hide and heal, a blast disturbs the process and wooden shrapnel impales Logan, leading him to just barely get away yet again. But with that healing factor, our boy Wolverine trucks right through and finds himself a little hiding in plain sight spot right beneath the predator as he desperately tries to heal as much as possible before the predator completely ends him. And from there we get a lovely look at the Wolverine from the past, early 1900s Alaskan territory. This is the Wolverine Wolverining before he became the X-Men, before the Weapon X program, before the Animantium. He's just doing his thing, being a lone man, hunting, scavenging, doing a little bit of poaching here and there. And as he monologues on, talking about how he's just fine being the loner that he is, usually using a bear's cave. And this is when we get introduced for the first time in Logan's long storied history with the Predator, because this book is an homage to the Predator's hunting the ultimate prey that just keeps on surviving. And they discover that that fellow scavenging for fish had already done away with a Predator and this predator grabs one of his fallen brethren's weapons and decides to go hunt Logan down. This part I'll skim through, but basically we got Wolverine going to a local bar in Alaska. We got this fella here who basically buys Logan a ton of alcohol and says, I need your services desperately. Logan, of course, giving the warning, you don't want to be around me, bub. Trouble follows. And soon after, of course, we get our quintessential bar brawl, where Logan makes very quick work of three punks, taking two of the blades that the man attacked him with and, well, putting them to good use right on the fella himself. Dispatches these guys in, like, four panels. The guy he smashed with a bottle goes for a Hail Mary. And uh, then we're met with the final coup de grace shot, this is before Wolverine had any qualms about ending somebody's mortal coil. So we got the snake oil salesman here talking about, oh, these bad people captured my son. And in the meantime, we got that predator tracking our boy Logan, testing out his old buddy's old weapon, making sure that it'll do quick damage, as it does, of course. A little frustrated with the prey, he goes for something a bit stronger, always challenging himself. Is that an orca? <laughs> I think I just realized that he ended an orca here. So he's trailing, and as we can see, there's a nice peaceful tribe here that Logan is actually quite partial to. Bear that in mind as it's going to mean something moving forward. So Wolverine and the snake oil salesman, I say that because he's full of it, makes up and concocts the story about how his son was kidnapped. We see Logan having a flashback of being a child. He's still got a soft spot, even though he is a absolute unhinged killer back in this day. Something spooks the horses, knocks our friends for the moment off, and they are greeted by, if your discretion advised, too late, this. This is what's left of the peaceful village that lived off the land. And seeing a moment of opportunity of the savagery, our little actor here says, before letting out a my god, it must be the guys that kidnapped my boy, they're monsters. This puts Wolverine 
in a berserker rage. And during this monologue, he talks about how this is pretty much how he lived his life. So he runs in there, asks no questions, shoots first, questions later, destroys these guys. I mean, completely butchers them. And right as he's demanding to know where the boy is, Wolverine gets a little boom boom in the back. And, uh, well, our snake oil salesman doesn't quite realize what uh, Wolverine's capable of. And it turns out that these were his old gang members, and he just wanted to take the money that they had taken off of a train job. As he's bidding adieu, something just kind of removes his head with ease. Bye-bye, Cash. Enter the predator that's been stalking Wolverine here from the beginning of the day as he's been hunting everything on God's green earth, or I should say snow. This is the first time they get to it, all right? The battle is beautifully illustrated. Wolverine gets a quick shot right in the Predator's neck and revealing the, the face of so-called Predator. Wolverine saying, I'm going to carve the ugly right out of you. The Predator not being any stranger to battle, he impales Logan immediately during a Berserker charge. They're both wounded, and there's this beautiful uh, moment where they are both tending to their wounds in sync in their own way. Logan's complete healing factor doing the work, the Predator using his super technology to close up all the wounds, and they both let out a fierce growl as they do the initial healing, like Logan here ripping out the trident or spear and then quickly as it started it resumes again predator throwing the blade disc at wolverine wolverine does realize that he might be outmatched now remember when i said wolverine sleeps in bear caves he's pretty much a man that's in harmony with the wildlife so he lures the predator into a trap and mr grizzly has a new chew toy so you may expect, as in past Predator issues, that this would be the end of the Predator. Wolverine, as he self-admits here, uh, don't get many smiles in me, but uh, I might have a, I might have cracked one. And, and he takes the blade that was being used against him as a little trophy. Bear that trophy in mind as well, as that's going to play in... Uh, a, f a few years later, if not a, a century, the Predator actually comes out uh, the winner, of course. So here we're at, I think, a Task Force X, or is that a DC thing? Or this is known as the Team X. So we have Jackson. This goes very old school Predator movie one style, cruel. Maverick, Wolverine, Sabretooth. This is when they were all in the Weapon X program and they don't remember everything about one another, which is the only way I can describe why they're not at each other's throats right now. So they get right down to it, guys. There's a, They find themselves going to this area where they're hunting a cartel. They see something very familiar. Now, everybody else thinks this is the work of the cartel, but something, and I'll quote, Something triggered deep inside my brain. A lost memory. And uh, here's Buddy Boy here. Jackson, I believe. He gets a quick net to the tree. And if you've seen the movies, you know how that ends. So he's chopped two smithereens. And Logan says, and this time, he brought reinforcements. So now we got five predators to the four left in Team X. More beautiful artwork here. Now, back present-day Canada, Wolverine still trying to heal desperately to get out with his life and not have his spine and skull as a trophy. He climbs down, and he's getting a little confident. We got the Predator throwing some of his uh, tracer bombs here. And boom, the Predator, by the way, as pointed out by Logan's narration, is letting out something close to a cackle. A cackle that sounds like the mandibles of some giant spider. Wolverine, 
takes a plunder. And this is bad news. Now, Wolverine has adamantium inside of his body, making water not his friend, with rocks dropping on top of him. And he points out water is pretty much one of his weaknesses. And the Predator takes a quick dive to go in for the swift kill. But we're going to go back to many years ago with Team X 4 versus 5. And uh, let's say this one plays out quite quickly. I don't know how this is in canon or whatnot, but we're going to have some pretty major characters get ended quick. There's the old blade that Logan uses immediately on the Predator he recognizes. And uh, we get into action. The battle begins. Sabretooth refusing to pull back. This is one of the few times Logan points out, I'm not one to run from a fight, but I need a spot to think. Sabretooth is having none of that and just starts letting loose. And we have after that, <laughs> before you can say, well, are you dead? We got another spear through the chest to Sabretooth, but don't count Sabretooth out. He gets a nice grab on the Predator, revealing him, and gives him a nice little hug slash impale. Nothing says a fine how do you do than a hug with a double spear. Ooh, DP. So Creed's down, Creed's down. He took him with him, I'll give him that. And now the, the team is pretty much panicking. Logan admitting he doesn't know what to do. It's about to get grotesque. The one lady is not spared any brutality here in the team. Does it even matter? There's one more thing we just gotta end. Just, and then that little wire uh, noose does its thing. Snatches her rights right up. Jackson is her name, of course. Damn shame. Even in death, I didn't remember her name. And she's dropped after some wildfire. Minus something pretty important. I believe it's her head. Check out the clean cut. Sorry, YouTube. Clean cut. Moving right on. Explosions, explosions. Everybody's almost taken out. We got two left here. Wolverine, and I think this is, this is Maverick or Havoc. I've lost track. Boom, right out of the uh, being invisible uh, technology. He jumps right in, and Havoc, going over Wolverine's shoulder, puts some very near-fatal shots into this attacking predator and as a result well that predator is down for the count but not gone and we're gonna see how predators deal with wounded allies if you can call them that they're all pretty much in competition with each other they start replaying some of the things they've heard which you know is the predator style what are they Logan don't know they're killers the Predator seems to be ready to greet his fate, if you want to call that a smile, or that just might be the way their jaws look. So the Predator kneels next to him. This is one of the nicest mercy kills I've ever seen, and I own, like, the, a huge Predator omnibus. He helps his buddy put the claws through his dome, ending that Predator as well. And as it goes, the, the, the mission must be finished. So they got the place bombed. There's the cartel. So I'm going to make this quick, but let's just say before everybody goes to town, the cartel leader uh, it tell, explains how right now there's bigger fish to fry. Let's put our differences aside and try to take out the larger threat. So the cartel and the last of Team X, which is just two of them, Wolverine and Maverick, I want to say, are up against the three or two predators left. The cartel is made pretty short work of, as we see one of them get disintegrated immediately. I think uh, that one has the old weapon back. It, it's a constant game of just catch and release with that weapon. But it was rigged to explode by Logan, and that seemingly ends this conflict. But as you can see, the same one, same one from 1900 Alaska Territory survives. And we're going to get, I love this flashback to the original Weapon X comic book right here. And I love this little nasty weapon, this bit where it's like some form of acid where he drops it on this soldier. And I'm sure you're going to recognize this image pretty soon. 
So he's we got the predator already walking through, seeing the aftermath of Logan's berserker rage. He was recaptured, so we have the predator for the well second time, third time, running into Logan, completely vulnerable, unconscious. Here's more beautiful artwork. And uh, this actually sets the pace for something coming up in the next issue. And here we have the present day battle. So the Predator is going in for the kill. Logan is weighted down, the adamantium, the stones, but he's luring him in. He keeps monologuing on about how you study dirt and tracks and spore, you stay downwind, you note know what's growing or hatching or breeding. You know where to find water and shelter. It's not about the gear. You ever come across those trophy hunters who drop 20 grand to kill a grizzly or a lion with their laser sights and multi-caliber sniper rifles? You know they don't know what they're doing. So this is insinuating that Logan has a plan as the Predator takes a dive through all the crimson in the water. Getting closer and closer to the present day battle but let's get back to the weapon x era logan completely vulnerable here so the predator decides to get crafty and it starts conducting a little bit of surgery checking out uh, logan's new anatomy and seeing the shiny adamantium bones decides he's got the ultimate trophy now logan is in berserker mode which is well when he does best in battle regardless of the outcome and gets a nice shot right in the predator three claws in and that spray that took care of that guy's face earlier well it's pretty damn effective and we see logan have the same treatment nice and shiny skull there so there's wolverine naked as the day he was born being taken into the Predator ship to be mounted as the trophy he believes Logan to be. And by all accounts, Logan is a goner at this point. So here we have the Predator marveling at previous trophies. Logan, helpless, faceless. And this is when Predator starts getting a little sidetracked and putting up some form of cold stasis to preserve the body attend to his wounds and as he's doing so and trying to escape quietly the good old us of a comes in sees the ufo and starts firing now this does just enough damage it's something within the blast that awakens logan and logan ain't none too happy to wake up without a face i love that shot right there berserker rage rage as he lets out a guttural and these are the the Air Force guys just saying that target hit, but it's not enough. Turning back at 70,000 feet. We got a bloodlusted Logan now just destroying everything mechanical in his path. And there's damage on the ship. There's damage that's being done to the ship. And Logan is sucked through the vortex and into the void. This is a very impressive feat. Now, there was a lot of backlash when Batman fell from the moon, but this is much more realistic. This is what should have happened to Batman. So, there's Wolverine just having a nice little graceful drop back through the atmosphere. Completely burns up. And check out the remnants. This is what... This happens to a mutant. I don't know how Batman managed it. Oh, DC lore. I do love my DC, but that's all that's left of Logan. Just a little bit of flesh and all skeleton. He is excavated. And here's a very, very awesome bit of writing here done. The scientist in charge of the Weapon X program, whose name I used to remember quite well, uh, when I, especially when I was reading Weapon X, he takes the Predator's helmet and kind of models it to make Weapon X's slash Wolverine's helmet. So that's like a fun bit of lore they added in there, and it totally works. And Wolverine doesn't remember any of it because of the mind wipe. So here we have uh, one week ago. Now, I was just reading this, decided to cover it. So I'm in somewhat uncharted territory. Uh, so we have Logan here. 
He found a mask. I'm assuming that's the one he took with him. And he's now staging a trap. He wants to go the Predator out and fight on his terms. I think this is what leads to the, our present day battle. And this time, I would set the terms of our engagement. This would end... We would end this hunt where it began. So, I guess this is in Alaska, where the only law is that of tooth and claw. One last flashback. Remember, I, t I said take note of the beautiful Japanese samurai art. We got Logan and his old master, a blind swordsman. I don't remember his name. I do apologize. So they're going to it, taking... Uh, Doing some excellent training. This is when Logan learns how to temper his rage. And uh, does not... It's a beautifully illustrated battle. And Logan is in fact bested here. As you can see right there. That would have been the killing blow. Maybe not for Logan, but for all intents and purposes. And now, something disrupts their peaceful match. And our boy has been beefing up for the occasion. Look at our Predator all decked out. He has been training and training, almost Batman-esque, to take out Logan once and for all. More beautiful artwork here. I just love when the Predators are just drawn. I, I've never seen a bad drawing of a Predator. Now, correction, I have in the second Omnibus. So here's the beginning. He's taunting the Predator with the mask. And we, we see our boy here donning some skeletal remains. Very Predator. Oh, throwback to the first movie. We got some old school traps. But no cigar as the Predator makes quick work of the incoming barrage with his claws. And then, waste no time, they fling at each other. They fling at each other with centuries behind them of bloodlust. I needed my blood on the ground. Logan thinks to himself, after evading an explosion or creating an explosion, there's so much chaos I haven't really caught it. Whoosh! Predator makes a very quick and effective shot, nearly blowing off Logan's entire arm. That did significant damage with one hit. And the Predator reclaims his trophy and taunts Logan in doing so. Back to Japan, this is one of my favorite moments. The master here, our blind swordsman, I think this is the guy who became Strife, decides not to intervene and notices that this is very personal. And for the first time, as far as I'm concerned, a predator utters something that's actually tangible, scraw, instead of the usual click-click noise or their alien language says scraw. I wonder if that's our first look into what they actually communicate. So in battle, Logan just Hail Marys the sword. Well, Hail Mary would be a strong term as he effectually knocks the predator out of his tree. And the battle commences here. Swipe after swipe, slash after slash. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Predator's not playing it fair, though. You pulling out that technology to swift blasts and he's rising up to pull me into his jaws and finish things as they begin <laughs> Wolverine just says F this and boom out come the claws he was trying to do it the honorable way and it seems the pre is the predator going to retreat yes in fact he does because the battle which could have ended there and epically in a fair one-on-one, -on -one, the hand comes in, marvels the hand comes in and ruins the fun. So here we go, Westchester, New York, the past. This is when Wolverine was in the X-Men. And so here's another story that's been untold. Wolverine, I remember he talks about how he's just too dangerous to be around anybody and he doesn't want to put anybody in danger. Irony strikes and it strikes hot. Noticing the all too familiar red dots on Xavier's head and evading uh, an explosion meant for Wolverine. In come another barrage of missiles. The entire X Men facility is being attacked. Colossus 
in shock, asking what's going on. Logan just says, those, those missiles hit the upper floors, and tells pretty much all of the effective mutants and heroes to save the children and get them out. And we have Kitty here, injured pretty bad. And she, uh, what is it? Is it transmutates through the ground? And we got Wolverine finally snared by his predator that's been following him for a century now. Predator runs into Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler does a quick teleport and takes Logan out of the equation, possibly saving him. There's all the old school X Men. And this is where Logan just snaps. That goes for all of you. Keep away from me. Of course, our kind soul and Catholic Nightcrawler tries to persuade Logan not to go it alone. But uh, Wolverine is not having any of it. And he's going right to the action, but notices the Predator has Rogue as a hostage. If only the Predator knew, she could probably handle herself. Let me see some of the, you've got me, okay, just don't hurt her. Don't hurt anyone else. You've got me. And he drops this jetpack to the ground, I think for a final explosion. And, oh, okay, no, the Predator actually gets Logan. As we can see, he appears to have gone uh, willingly, almost cuffed. But uh, he he goes in. You sure you got the right guy? I'm double the trouble. And it appears that wasn't actually Wolverine. What was that? Nightcrawler, it appears. Guten Tag. He greets the Predator. Pulls out some of the wires that's important for his whole technology to function. Kitty comes out of the ground. And they lay a nice little whooping on this creature. Scrawl. It says in complete befuddlement. And it looks like just for today, the X-Men survive another day. We're back to present day. This is the last battle. The final battle. A hundred years in the making. It's just tooth and claw. I think Wolverine's covered himself in mud. Another little nod to the original Predator movie. And Wolverine finally gets his opportunity. No holding back. Jumping on the Predator, both claws deep in, and starts wrecking havoc on the Predator's body. Predator's still strong enough to knock Logan away, and a little EMP blast of some kind. This lovely scene right here, with the moon in stark contrast with the opposing forces like poetry. And into battle, it looks like the Predator gets the advantage here, and impales Logan... And you guys know what that means. He is ready to self-destruct and end both of them just for the sake of saying, I took you down with me. Explosion is ignited. And both are almost nearly disintegrated. There's only that whole thing about the healing factor. So in closing, not sure how many days passed, but when I finally pulled myself out of that smoking crater... I felt like a lit cigar, crushed out in an ashtray. There was an emptiness inside me. It took me a while to realize where it came from. I missed having him out there. Nothing makes you feel more alive than a gun pressed to your temple, or the cold click of a knife at your neck. So I was going to be a little deader every day I lived without him coming for me. He looks down at his opponent, who has finally been destroyed. At least he left me a dangerous trophy. I see my reflection in its blade. I'll remember its keen edge every day of my damned life. And here's just some variant covers, some, some beautiful artwork. I would have loved to have collected them all like this, but uh, I've mentioned before I only do so with certain runs that I just find absolutely addictive and necessary and I think they'll be very important down the line. Look at that Weapon X style Berserker Rage Logan leaping at the Predator present day battle right there showing how towering the Predator is over him. A moment of the Predator owning, poning Wolverine 
just showing off this artwork here. This is something that I think I want to do a bit more. And I'd oh, look at that. If the Predator had his way, there's the Marvel Universe. Oh, no, that's just every version of Logan that we've ever seen. Oh, man, that's, that's like first edition Wolverine right there. Everybody thinks he started in the orange. That was, I think, a rough cut of how he was originally drawn back in the day. Oh, man, and I can't wait for the next Predator movie. And the last Aliens movie was pretty good. So this is one of my top ten comic books. I have a ton, and I'm probably going to be reviewing more. I'd love to take any, any feedback, criticisms. I'm sure there's plenty or comments. Do you own this comic book? What do you recommend? I've got a ton more. I'm definitely way more Batman focused, but drop a like if you enjoyed. If you stayed along for the ride, uh, leave a comment and uh, hit the subscribe button if this is something you'd like to see more. If I see this uh, going a little bit better, then I may just start proper editing and downloading the pages and maybe, I don't know, some more voice work. Let me know what you guys think. Have a good one, alright? On to the next adventure.